October 1964 and the first issue of Militant, published only a few days before Harold Wilson first became Prime Minister. For its first ten years, Militant kept a fairly low profile in the Labour Party, concentrating on the young socialists. By 1970, Militant was in control of the YS, and by 1974, every single member of the Young Socialist National Executive was a Militant supporter. One of those Militant supporters was Andy Bevan. In 1976, Bevan was chosen as Labour Party Youth Officer, a setback for the right wing, and for Prime Minister Jim Callaghan, who strongly opposed the appointment. But the Bevan affair caused Labour's National Executive to carry out its first inquiry into Militant's activities. That inquiry was based on the work of Reg Underhill, then the Labour Party's national agent, and now Lord Underhill. From 1975 onwards, Underhill presented the NEC with more than 20 secret documents, allegedly published by Militant, which he claimed showed that Militant was a party within a party, with its own staff, finances, international links and organisation. In spite of that inquiry and of Underhill's evidence, for seven years the executive took little action. One hates to say, I told you so, but if they had acted in 1975, the position would have been much easier to tackle than it is today. And therefore we've wasted seven years, and in that respect it's enabled the militant tendency to develop its influence far more than if we tackled the position in 75. And even in 80, we could possibly have dealt with the position uh, satisfactorily. And therefore, whilst I'm sorry that they never moved before. I'm delighted that we've now got confirmation today in 1982. In the last 18 months, eight militant supporters have been selected as candidates for Labour at the next election. Four of them in seats Labour must win to get a majority. These selections and the growing press attention and concern about militant's activities finally persuaded Michael Foote and the National Executive to set up a new inquiry last December. Its report, published last Friday, basically said that militants should reform or be excluded from the party. If the NEC uses this report, as I said, for bans, prescriptions and expulsions, we will campaign against that. We will go to every corner of the Labour Party, of the trade unions, of the wards, of the shop stewards committees, and we are convinced that when they hear the real ideas of militants, and not as they're distorted in the media, the ideas of socialism, we will get the support of the rank and file. But whatever the outcome of today's meeting of Labour's National Executive, it's quite clear that the long battle over Militant is going to drag on for some time to come. The leaders of Militant, based at their offices here in Hackney, have made it clear that they're going to fight any decision to expel them. And they quote more than 200 resolutions from local Labour parties against witch hunts. On the other hand, it's also clear there are many people on the right of the party who won't be happy until the leadership of Militant is expelled. Michael Crick, News at One at the militant offices in Hackney.